That's in here. Oh, good. We got to get him in. Yeah. Don't make Michael Madsen wait. Where is he sitting? I think he just arrived. He's walking down the hall. Yeah, he's walking out. Oh, is he? First time in a couple of years, huh? Yeah. He's just a cool fucking dude, man. Yeah, he is. Look I'm very him. happy to meet him. You're going to bark all day, little dog? Look at him. He just looks like Look. Michael Madsen. Wait till you hear him, man. He's the best. He is like the king. He is the shit. He's ridiculous. Look at Michael, Michael Madsen. Love this guy. There you go. Hi. How you doing? Michael! Michael hey. Madsen. There he is. <laughs> What's up, brother? How you been, man? Good? That was like fortune here. That was <laughs> either Jimmy oh, no, it's or... The, it's the eggs. Or dumb egg whites. We just had some eggs. I hate that Is shit. That a gas mask for me? It does yeah, stink, sorry. right? <laughs> egg whites suck. <laughs> You're going to have an egg, have an egg. But the eggs smell, egg whites. no matter what. No, nah, you know what? Egg whites smell worse than fucking... Yo the the yolk thing cancels it out or something. It, it was uh, the Swiss cheese, too. Oh, was it? I think so, yeah. That's got to be really bad. You smell very good. All the way coming out. Did you, you just do, pull yeah. a Red Bull out of your I back pocket? Shower. Yes, I did. Right yeah. the yeah. fuck off. energy. <laughs> quick energy. <laughs> hey, I, I need to kickstart. You need a little kickstart uh, early, early right? in the morning. Well, You're not a morning guy, right? Well, no. Yeah, no. Well, I am. I mean, if I have to be, yeah. Yeah, you know. I can be a morning guy. It depends on what I have to do in the morning. You when you wake up next to her, it's not that hard to Well, I wouldn't day. imagine it would be. Yeah. I gotta get this sound here. <laughs> <laughs> Did you watch the Oscars last night? I um, have to ask you. It's my turn. Yeah. I uh, I did watch them, yeah. Of course, didn't everybody? <laughs> what's, your what's your take on that whole thing? Well, I, uh, I think I was really happy that uh, the King's speech got something a few things i don't usually watch a lot of movies because uh sometimes if that's what you do for a living it's hard to really appreciate it because you know exactly how it was done and it, it's kind of hard to take Takes the magic out of it yeah, yeah. but I, I did watch that picture and uh i thought it was really damn good and i was happy that uh it got recognized and didn't mm. get buried under some uh Piece of shit. <laughs> some, some, yeah, well, yeah, yeah, exactly. That's, you, you know, man. that's what happens. Uh, it yeah, usually does happen. Yeah. I was surprised. I thought it was pretty spread out across the board. Yeah, there wasn't like. Well, I guess they did pretty good because what do they get? They got picture, actor, and director. director. Yeah, that's, so that's I mean, kind of that's the big. Those are the big ones. Mm. It's good but, news for Bob and Harvey Weinstein. Yeah, yeah. It I liked it. I thought he, Colin Firth deserved best actor. Yeah. The movie itself, I kind of liked Inception. I just, it, it was just, it was just a true story. So I thought he was amazing. Mm. But I, you know, the guy was just yammering through the whole fucking thing. <laughs> <laughs> we got it. Yammering. It's a victory. In, in, Inception's a, a, isn't about Leo. It's about the special effects. But yeah, yeah, yeah. that's true. Didn't they win for that too? Special effects. And I think they did. Sound yeah. editing, all that yeah. stuff. I haven't seen the picture, so you know. Have to be nice and fair. Well, I haven't checked out. Since I start yet. talking about people, as people will never give me a job. So I keep phasing out on that movie. I hated it for the first ten minutes, and then all <laughs> really? of a sudden I watched no, it again like, and I loved it. Just like, God <laughs> damn. Yeah, you gotta watch it a couple times. <laughs> yeah, before. yeah, you just kind of oh, watch it. It's not it. so bad. I love that fucking. Because there are certain points of that movie you could definitely <laughs> get up to go grab something from the fridge or take a piss and and not care if you come back and sit down for the rest of it. Yeah, it's like ah, eh, it's a bad sign. Twenty ten, John Cusack thing. Oh man, yeah. In the name of Almighty God, you know, <laughs> really need that. Why are they determined to make these pictures about the end of everything? Apocalypse. This they is love what's it. going to happen tomorrow. Battle, uh, God, Battle of Los Angeles. That's one that's coming out soon. The Winter Bone was very good. I thought. Yeah. Yeah. The Winter's Bone. It was. And that had that fucking, you know, when you look at the guy that was behind the counter at the liquor store in fucking Dust Till Dawn, yeah. and he's nominated for an Oscar, it's like, mm -hmm. wow, that's pretty fucking cool. <laughs> that, guy, that guy was good. He was intense. Eh? He was really got that backwards, scary kind yeah, of thing going yeah. on. Yeah, yeah. That would have been a good part for me. Yeah, yeah fuck yeah, man. Perfect. Yeah, I could have smoked that for sure. Yeah, <laughs> definitely. Yeah. Do you watch movies like that where you're like, I know I could do that better than him. He's fucking awful. Well, it's not that I would do it better, but I'd do it different. And, uh, you know, I, uh, my wife talked me into watching the picture. And I'm glad she did. It was really good. Yeah. Good girls. I don't know. All the characters seem so real. Their threat. They actually had a real threat behind what they were doing and that. it was cool 
There's something about when you can really kind of relate to a character on screen as as opposed to just they think that the action or or, or um, just blatant violence for no reason is going to make it a good movie when you don't give a shit about who is having violence perpetrated <laughs> upon them. You know, like it's, it, yeah, I, I think you're right. And there's a, some, there has to be some depth behind the violence. Yeah, yeah. Mean anything. I mean, not to care yeah. something about the person or understand the person perpetrating these things. Yeah, I mean, I'm sure you've heard it a thousand times. Uh, the, the, the the violence perpetrated against uh, that poor cop sitting in that chair. <laughs> well, <laughs> well, that well. was that was but that was done perfectly. That was you know done in a way where it's like you obviously understood your character. You understood this cop is really fucked, even though they didn't get into you know his whole story, but you, you knew enough about him. And you knew he was scared shitless, so it was just done very well. You know how scary it is when you're begging for your life and you hear, "Are you done?" Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Are you done? yeah, yeah. It's like that's got that. That really did fuck with people. Is the fact that there's no talking himself right. out of this because you're really annoying. This me. guy, he's talking yeah, to a yeah. fucking, he's talking yeah, to a pit, yeah. a pit bull. I, I, I was busy trying to get something finished and. <laughs> Wasn't listening to all yeah, yeah, you, you finished? You finished? Is that it? Is that it? <laughs> I know. It's like a, I, you know, I'm not even it. sure that was in the uh, script. I probably made that up. Really? Uh, Just kind of. Yeah, I probably wanted. To, I personally, I probably wanted to go to lunch or something. And I was, <laughs> yeah, you finished. Subconsciously, I was trying to get out of it. You done? You finished? You know. So what is it? Three o'clock. Oh, I gotta get back to Malibu. I'm starving. And what makes that scene horrifying too is when he leaves and it's just a beautiful day outside. Yeah. And I think you hear dogs barking. Yeah, yeah. We're birds yeah. chirping. Kids playing and stuff. And you're like, holy like, shit! Uh, there's that a was horror my show going on. The guy's inside. still inside. Yeah. That yeah. was my. That was my car. That. that oh, that's right. Yeah. You All right. You ever sell that thing? No, in fact, I still have it. I we tried Jesus. to we tried to sell it for you last time. Yeah, right? well, I no, I, did, I didn't get a good enough offer. No, <laughs> man, <laughs> it got up to some ridiculous like fifteen grand or something. You gotta be kidding! You, I wouldn't give that damn thing up for fifteen G's. You gotta, I'll leave it for my kids after I croak. <laughs> <laughs> then when I croak, the car will be like triple in value. Yeah, it would. <laughs> this yeah. was his car. He's dead yeah. now. You might remember this car. Remember this car? Michael Madsen opened the trunk. To get a gas can to burn a guy. Yeah. How, that's the best part. It's such a nice day, but he's going to get gas yeah. to yeah, burn a man. A I, I forgot. I left it in the car. I'll be right back. <laughs> yeah. yeah. We actually left Kirk in that chair at lunchtime once. And all time really? It was, it was just a joke, you know. He didn't, he didn't appreciate it. <laughs> what, are you, uh, what, are you, what are you working on I don't now? even know what he's promoting. You've got like a thousand got projects like you're working on. That you're well, working. There's a Michael Madsen book right in front you know, of him. No, if, if you, the IMDb is full of shit, okay? So there's a lot of things in there that are very irresponsible, and you have to be careful with those guys. Oh, really? Yeah, you run into somebody on an elevator, and they tell you their brother-in-law wrote a script, and the next thing you know, it's on the IMDb that it's in post-production. Oh, shit. And it's really not right. Mm, okay. But, uh, I'll keep that I'm, in mind, because I take it as law. I'm I'm just, in, <laughs> just call me, and I'll tell you. <laughs> <laughs> I'm here promoting a picture called The Bleeding. I did a vampire picture with DMX, and... Uh, Michael Mathias is the lead of the picture, and Vinnie Jones is in it, and um, it's pretty good. It's a big action movie. I play a priest, actually, in the film. Not a, mm. like, a priest. Well, I mean, he's a priest, but he's, <laughs> <laughs> he's a priest with a Thompson. Oh, so <laughs> badass. Machine guns. Badass he's priest. He's got two. They're like 25 pounds a piece. Two things. Thompsons. Try to shoot them both at the same time. It's pretty cool. God damn, yeah. yeah. I, I bet. It's Shit, action it sounds adventure. like fun. Oh, it's yeah, it's a good movie. <laughs> There's an audience for that type of picture, and um, it's uh, you know having a big premiere here, like a red carpet event. Oh, cool, man! You want to come? Yeah, we'll I'd go. Love to. You're all invited. Know. Yeah. Cool. When is the premiere? It's uh, what does that say right there? It's uh, February 25th to March uh, 3rd, Village Cinema East. Hmm. February yeah. 25th. By the way, how February twenty fifth? Could we be right. less show busy people? We should have said, yeah. "When can you come?" We should say, "Well, when is it?" We'll check. But no one said that. We're like, "Yes, we're we're available." Of course we are. <laughs> Doesn't matter when or <laughs> anything. We're live broadcast from the red carpet. We're there. So the red carpet's happening for a few different days. I'm I'm confused. Or I that's, think it's there too. Yeah, that's that's the exclusive day. engagement. I'm imagining okay. the red carpet is probably the twenty fifth, the first night. Well, the twenty fifth happened. That's oh, tomorrow, no, it's we're tomorrow up, night. Yeah, we're up to the twenty eighth. Oh, okay. It's tomorrow night. Or tomorrow. Well, what's night. going on? Do you know what's going on? 
<laughs> with, oh, nice. with what? With the red carpet in this movie? Wait a minute, I just got some notes. No? <laughs> it says, uh, "Oh, it's, Roland just kind of handed over the ca the, uh, the 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 cast sheet of the bleeding." That's good. Cause we were wondering who the executive producer was, Roland. Why are you handing us this? Uh, oh, we're just trying to be polite. Ro yeah, Ro <laughs> Roland just handed a list of executive producers and producers of the movie. Yeah, well, I, it's the worst piece of paper. I've ever, How many it's of those the names least helpful thing he could have handed? How many me. of those names we know? Frank Capra. Frank Capra Jr. That's pretty interesting. <laughs> oh, Lance Lane. Uh, that that is Lance Lane. Yeah, Lance Lane is cool. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Patrick Durham. Yeah. <laughs> yes. <laughs> what is Roland? Doing? What are you doing, Roland? <laughs> You're messing up our Madsen interview. Yeah, we don't no, get to talk to him that Here's often. Book. Yeah, what's the book this, about? I, I see that. You guys. Okay. American Badass. Fuck Every it. morning I'm going to show you how to read one poem. Oh, Jimmy loves reading Every poems. morning you can pick one out and read one. And Jimmy, you want to read one? I would and love you, to. Uh, yeah. you, wrote, you wrote the poems? I did, yeah. Yeah? Yeah, you want to hear one? What's the gist yeah. of it? Yeah. Well, it's short stories in poetry. It's uh, like from my world travels. That's Thailand, by the way. That's a man, believe it or not. I believe it. <laughs> believe it. You're talking yeah, to a man yeah. that's taking that Whoa. plunge. <laughs> oh, no. Jimmy's uh, tasted the fruits. Did you find out the hard way? <laughs> yeah. Kind well, of. Is there any he likes to tell himself that. <laughs> yeah. I didn't know. Oh, oh boy. Where's yeah. page 53? Can some cool find? pictures you're in that book. Right. Can you find, find page 53? <laughs> <laughs> That's some cool what were you doing in though? Thailand? I need some glasses. Michael. Oh, I was shooting a movie. Shooting a movie? Did you get to really check fun. out some of those weird sex shows? Um, they get really uh, strange over there. Yeah, they the strip clubs they, and they, stuff they, they with darts. Do, they, they have different themes, you know. They have different girls, uh, secretaries and pom pom girls and um, college. I saw some girls. She took a pin with a feather on it and put it in a straw, and then put it in her vagina. And did some kind of muscle move, and yeah. the pin shot out and popped a balloon. Not bad, huh? It's fucking amazing. It's a hell of a talent. Can you do that, honey? <laughs> <laughs> she doesn't nah. have to. She has many other things. That <laughs> many other keep talents. Me occupied. I need some glasses <laughs> if I read this thing. I know, right? You got any reading I glasses? hate that. My eyes are my eyes are gone. Oh, they say that that's what happens. The eyes, the knees, and everything still works with me. But I, yeah. yeah, I need some reading glasses. Do we have any glasses from Michael? It's been funny. You like it. Your wife's giving you oh, hers. Look at that. Oh, there you go. Thank you. You, honey. you are going to look fantastic with those on. <laughs> All right. <laughs> Can you Red. see what those are? Jesus. That is Hold great. on. I got oh, my God. Oh, fucking picture. Hold on. Are you oh on the Twitter, God. Michael? I have somewhere. Somewhere. <laughs> <laughs> somewhere. It's called Red Dragons. The dragonflies have an airstrip in Thailand. They line up like little red helicopters all along the stretch of stone next to the pool. Every morning I go for a swim and even sometimes in the river. One has to be careful because the river Kwai has a strong current. I heard that long ago there was a bridge that became famous because it was blown up by POWs during the war to stop supply trains from getting across. I also heard there are some letters written by soldiers that were here. And now I'm walking by the same waterway eating strange fruit and Russian salami cut with a switchblade I bought at the marketplace. You know you've been in a place long enough when your farts start to smell exactly like the jungle around you. <laughs> there are a lot of different kinds of jungles and a lot of different kinds of farts. <laughs> <laughs> this morning, I came down the stairs and a small Thai woman smiled at me and she wore a blue uniform, which meant she worked for housekeeping and I recognized her as the one who always put fruit in my room. Her smile was like the smile of the generations of Thai people, and I hope the smell of my farts in my room has not offended her. <laughs> but uh, she would have smiled at me anyway, because that's the way that they are. She was eating grapes, and I asked her if she was taking a break, and she smiled again. I went to the lobby to my car and out to the set, where I spent the rest of the day playing a crazed American mercenary, massacring Asian families and burning their village to the ground. The last time I came back from here, I spent a few days in a nut house. I hope that doesn't happen again. <laughs> <laughs> oh, holy shit. That's great. What a great little chunk of your life there for a moment. Listen to those pages of it. If, uh, you know, That's a great help. book. 
I need some help, fellas. You need to. I'll leave this for you. And you can. That's great, yeah, man. We'll, we'll you should be them. doing book signings with that. You should literally be doing book signings. That's great. Great pictures in here. All kinds of stuff. Yeah, it's a color book. It's uh, what it's, kind of pictures in there, Jimmy? I can't. Yeah, we only have one still, copy of the book. That's, that's the south of France. With wow. Yeah. Her. That's my little five-year-old Luke. Yeah, you got like Cool Hand that. Luke. He calls himself Cool Hand Luke. Yeah, this uh, self-proclaimed Cool Hand. Luke. You know, he has a Cool Hand Luke poster on his wall, and he recognized, you know, the, his name Luke, and. I said, it's Cool Hand Luke, so now he needs, what's your name? He goes, Cool Hand Luke. <laughs> 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 he can't, I don't, he's going to try to eat 50 eggs, but <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, hope, I hope he doesn't. That's a tough order. <laughs> Some great shots in there. No, he's a cool little guy. He's, uh, he's actually, um, yeah, he's charming. He's pretty funny at five. He dislocated my jaw the other day. How'd that happen? I, I was in a hotel, and... Uh, he was there with me and his mom, and uh, I had one of those bungee cords that you exercise with, right? right? It has these big wooden handles on it. Anyway, he he stretched it. I was sitting on the couch like that, and he stretched it all the way to the door oh, of the room, you know? And I realized, I was like, oh, shit, you know? And he was just staring at me, and I thought it was like one of those moments where I could have a uh, father and son lesson and trust and love, you know, and I said, you know, son, um, if I was to let go of my end of this thing, it most likely would take your head off. <laughs> I said, at least knock you against the wall and, you know, might hurt a little bit. And he was staring at me and, and I said, but you know what? I'm not going to let go because I love you and I want you to trust me. I'm your father. And about three or four seconds went by, you know what he did? <laughs> he fucking let go, man. And boy, I'm telling you, that thing was. I don't know if you've ever been hit by a bungee that's been stretched six, six, nine or ten feet from you, but it got me right in the side of the face. And I felt like I just got smacked by Marvin, Marvin Hagler. And I, I, I literally knocked me over. I was like sitting on a hide of bed. And it dislocated my jaw, right? So, yeah, you know, and he thought it was funny. And I rolled over on the floor and I hit my f face and I popped it back in. But then my face swelled up like a pumpkin on one side. But it was one of those moments, you know. You know. <laughs> Did you have any post? Taken out by a five-year-old. Trust right? speech with him after that? Like, yeah. <laughs> hey. uh, he was really sorry and I knew that he was sorry. And I just hugged him and told him he was a good boy. What are you gonna do? You know, you're uh, no no uh, no corporal punishment with the children. No, no, I got enough of that when I was a kid. I, I yeah, don't, I don't. Uh, I try to. Sometimes do that perpetuates the thing. I, I want them to to uh, love me because I want them to listen to me because they love me, not because they're scared of me. Yeah, it's a different deal, you know. What was the most common form of discipline you you uh? When you're growing up, no punch it? in the face. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> wow, the most common Jeez. form. Yeah, lights out, Mike. Yeah. <laughs> oh Jesus! And wake up later and wonder what the. What oh I do to man. Deserve that? Wow. Down we, the stairs. Well, you seem like you were probably a pretty rambunctious kid, <laughs> and uh, maybe a handful as a teen. Uh, well, where you Later in life, I realized perhaps I had it coming a few times, but, uh, you know, I don't know. Those days are over. You ever get in serious trouble, uh, arrested, shit like that, when you were growing up? Or? I think that's probably what was irritating my father. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah, it's the punches. I was constantly in trouble for some damn thing, one thing or another, but uh, it was innocent back then. You know, yeah? St stealing cars and... That kind of thing. <clears throat> That's innocent. Yeah, it's a felony. <laughs> yeah, well. Yes, I know. I, unfortunately, I can't vote now because of that. But uh, a lot of my friends, all my pals I grew up with, they're not here anymore. And uh, so I guess I'm lucky. I, I, I made it and they didn't. And uh, even recently, I mean, I lost uh, Chris Penn. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. David yeah. Carradine, Dennis Hopper. Mm -hmm. you know, all these guys were really like... Uh, you know, they're not, you're not going to see the likes of people like that again. I mean, really, no. I, I, 
you don't miss somebody like that until they're not around anymore. And then you go, oh my God almighty, who am I going to talk to at 3 o'clock in the morning now? You know? Sure. Did I, did you, you knew Carradine. Did anybody, like, his, I mean, I mean uh, Dan Hopper was old and he was sick. And, but Carradine kind of went in a really un... People would never would have seen that one coming. Did you did you know that about him, knowing him? Was that like something he'd be open with his friends? I, or? I, I, I think if you're going to go out in some sort of sexual mystery <laughs> <laughs> in, 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 your, in, your, in your 70s... I don't even know if we're supposed to laugh. I don't you know, know what I'm saying. I don't want to get it doesn't get better than that. It makes right? perfect sense. Right, yeah, right. it was I a mean, sexual I mean, mystery. Yeah, I mean, well, no one's ever really gonna know what happened. You know, it's like Kennedy or Marilyn Monroe. You know, what really happened? No one's gonna know. And I think that's kind of interesting. I mean, it's very David to have done something like that. Really? Right? You know, I mean, what an exit. It's yeah, good. it's sort of like a. Uh... <laughs> that's a great way to put it. What an exit. <laughs> I'm leaving now, and this is what happened. It's like, sort of like uh, really what's his name, uh, Bob Crane. It was the same thing. Like, no one really knows what happened to him. He was well, no beaten. one cares. He was, no one cares. <laughs> but it was such a sordid thing. Like, you just thought of him as being dumb Hogan from Hogan's Heroes. He got murdered by a And then you find out, like, his, his skull was yeah. literally pulverized with a tripod. Somebody so. was angry. Yeah, someone was mad. He didn't do it to himself, that's for sure. No, it was no suicide. suicide. <laughs> <laughs> Myself in the Because he used to truck. film and videotape, like, his sexual exploits yeah. all the time. Probably he fucked somebody's like wife and videotaped boy. it. That would be an interesting... Um, they should put that on an adult channel somewhere. Yeah. <laughs> What's Bob the Crane, Crane tape. <laughs> How come yeah, those never came out? I don't know. Like, I, you, would, you would think there'd be a shitload of... Uh, Mm -hmm. Films and videos of Bob Crane just going at it. Why do we yeah. go? Past, he had a big hog. Why do we go past the fact that he popped his own jaw in? We just like it. That's like a normal. <laughs> thing. That, did strike, that did strike me as if really uncomfortable. To, but I just like uh. if it happened to any one of us, we'd be calling nine one one. We'd be at the hospital. Michael Madsen. He just well, casually said I popped stuff like my that. jaw back in, and we're like, yeah, of course, that's what we would do if that she happened was, to us. She was trying to call the the hospital. Yeah. In an ambulance or something, and I said, "Honey, no! In the name of God, don't do that. I don't need to be, you know, filmed by someone." Madsen arrives in the hospital. I mean, I just, honey, broken God jaw. Almighty, oh boy, I can take care of this, honey. Please don't panic. Yeah, Danny points out you're talking to a man with motorcycles all over his shirt and skulls on his boots. I'm surprised <laughs> yeah, yeah. he popped his own jaw in. All right, <laughs> exactly. Good point. Good point. <laughs> I need to go shopping. I, I, my, my wardrobe is getting a bit tired. <laughs> I mean, honestly, I do. My my bags are all messed up, and I I, I do need some nice clothes. I, I should have went to the Oscars. I might have got a free suit out of it. <laughs> <laughs> Do you uh, do Don't you ride? Bono. Sorry. Do you ride bikes? Oh like, God, yeah. Yeah. I, um, I got a couple. But I have the bike from Hell Ride. Uh, see that picture? Oh yeah, yeah. I know the one you talk about. Dennis and David. Yep. And I got the gent bike. They b built that bike for me for the movie, and then at the end of the thing, when they first gave me the bike, yeah. it didn't. There it is, right there. Look that's at cool. that thing. Yeah, wow. That's an SNS bike. It's a shovel head motor on an SNS frame. Do you know that bike has no front brake? You could tell yeah. us like I, I went to the, really when I went there, to the set on the first day. I said, "Where's my bike?" And they said, "Oh, it's in the truck." And they took it out, and uh, and I looked at it and I said, "You guys, there's no front brake." And I, oh, Jesus, you're right. And I said, "Well, how am I supposed to stop on a hill, up or down hill? I hit a mark in a movie with no front brake." I said, "You know, I'm gonna kill myself." And because of that last statement, the part about killing. I get a letter from the Weinstein Company telling me that uh, if I ride that bike in the movie, they're not responsible for what happens to me. <laughs> and, uh, uh, you know, so we, I, I taught myself how to ride it without the front brake. And then, then they made a double of it, but it didn't look exactly the same. The back fender was different, and the front wheel looked different because now it had a great big disc on it. And so I... I said, listen, I already know how to ride this one, so I'm going to keep this one, and, and, and I'll sign the paper, I'll sign the death warrant, but I want to keep the bike. <laughs> oh, shit. Yeah. So it was kind of a deal we made. In the, your life? In my garage. Risking your life for the bike. Yeah. Pretty much what you did. My, no, man. <laughs> <laughs> it's in the garage. I got the gent bike. It's not one of those items that'll be worth some dough when I kick off. Jesus. <laughs> how much harder is it to stop? I don't know how to ride a motorcycle. How much harder is it to stop with, all, with no front brake? Uh, well, it depends on how fast you're going. It depends on what kind of surface you're on. And, uh, you know, you can usually glide into something with a foot brake and then eventually put your foot down and just, you don't want to try to stop on a hill, man. No. It's a, a bit sketchy. But we were in Barstow and there's a lot of flat, 
highways over there. Gets a little squirrely on it's the back wheel. It's a good bike. It's a great motorcycle picture. You know, the plot doesn't make much sense, but it's really fun to watch it. <laughs> <laughs> I can understand what it's about, but it's really cool to, to watch it. Quentin, Quentin Tarantino cut that thing. Thank God he saved it by editing it. Yeah. Really? <laughs> well, apparently it was pretty hard to put it together, and they had a, did a couple passes on the editing, and then finally Quentin said, okay, now it's my turn. And he took all the footage and actually put it together really nicely. Those are the most underrated guys in, in Hollywood are the editors. Sally Minky, too, yeah. She was on the, uh, when they did the memoriam thing last night, they showed Sally. Yeah. Yeah, yeah she cut me, good Lord, up. Well, a lot of times. And, yeah. Uh, she was really wonderful. It's sad what happened to her. It is amazing. What happened to that... her? She oh, died she was... hiking. Yeah. Oh, she, she was the one she who was died up in hiking. Griffin's That's Park right. somewhere. That's right, right. With right. her dog sitting next to her. Hypothermia. Yeah. Good God. I used to hike in Griffith Park when I first went to Hollywood. <laughs> <laughs> Why? Was it the thing to do? Um get out and do some hiking i used to hike up to the observatory oh, nice. and i used to sit up on the roof up there and read scripts and look at the hollywood sign if you could see it through the smog and i don't know i was very introspective in those days <laughs> thought it was like the thing to do and <laughs> ah, you know i was a loner i was here by myself I was pumping gas in uh, union 76 and i had my little had my harley and that was about it and, you know, I didn't know where I was. I just separate yourself from everybody else that has a script and is trying <laughs> to get work out there and working at gas stations. Uh, it took a while. Yeah. You know, it took a long while. I met a lot of people pumping gas. Fred Astaire came in on uh, Christmas Eve, I remember. He had a flat tire. And I met Peter Falk, Cicely Tyson, Warren Beatty, Jack Jesus. Lemmon. The gas Jack station Lemmon. to the stars. <laughs> Jack Lemmon had this really old MG... And I met Tom Knotts one time. Oh, really? Yeah. Lots were any of them girls. cocks or no, they were all okay? Huh? Were any of them pricks or they were all okay? Um, I thought Warren Beatty was very bizarre. <laughs> and then years later, he was supposed to play my brother in Kill Bill. Warren Beatty was the original Bill in Kill Bill. Oh, really? But him and Quentin just couldn't uh, understand each other. Mm -hmm. So they decided to um, not work together. And that's how David oh, Carradine wow. got in there. But everybody was pretty nice. I met Donald Sutherland came in one time. He was very bizarre. He's about seven feet tall. <laughs> 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 but I had my, my, the guy that I worked for, his name was Ray. And I started getting episodic television shows. I got an episode of St. Elsewhere. And then I did um, an episode of Cagney and Lacey. And I went to, uh, you know, I said, I said, look, you know, I got a TV show. And I, you know, and I have to be off for, you know, Tuesday and Wednesday. And, he goes, listen, kid, let me tell you something. I was like, what? What is it? He goes, you better figure out what you want to do. <laughs> <laughs> you know, why didn't you tell us you were an actor when we hired you? And I said, well, I really didn't think I was uh, qualified to say that. <laughs> and he said, we need you around here, so you better make up your mind, son. What are you going to do? The chances of this continuing to happen are a billion to one. I said, well, I, considering I'm making $2.50 an hour with, with you, man, I said, you know, I think uh, maybe I'll take a shot. Take it. <laughs> After a few more shows, I just, that was it. I, uh, I, worked, <laughs> I, I worked with Dice for a long uh, tour with him, and he, uh, he loves you. He would speak very, very uh, frequently about your days on Crime Story together. Yeah, he's a fun guy. He's, he's great. I sure, probably would have seen him this weekend if I had been in L.A. because I was supposed to do that thing at the Beverly Hills Hotel the night of 1,000 Forgotten. But um, I what's, didn't make it. What's that? I'm just joking. It's, oh. a, it's a thing called... How night. stupid am I? <laughs> no, it's a, thing called, it's a thing called Night of 100 Stars. Oh. And they do oh. it at the Beverly Hills Hotel. It's like a viewing party. And it's very nice. And you see a lot of people like Mickey Rooney and... <laughs> Connie Stevens. And Holy shit. Oh, wow. Rigno and it's great. Batman. <laughs> <laughs> There'd be me and David wow. Carradine sit there, you know, why are we here? <laughs> then Dice would come over and sit down and it would all become obvious and understandable. 
<laughs> now there goes Judd Nelson. Holy Jesus. <laughs> what would, would, would it be open to the public? Or? Is that Scott Bale? It's like Comic-Con. <laughs> My yeah. God almighty. Look get, at him. Get real excited, huh? When is it open by? to the public? Do uh, no. people come in? No. no it's, it's so not. what is it? Like this just... Norby Walters throws the whole thing. It's actually a really, really nice event. I met... Uh, Anna Nicole there. Remember her? The oh, yeah, yeah. Yeah, she reached across the table and grabbed my hand, and she was telling me how much she loved me and Thelma and Louise, and she wouldn't let go of my hand. She's a big chick, man, you know? <laughs> and she was pulling hard, and she almost pulled me across the table, for Christ's sake. I mean, I had to pull away from her to get away from her. She's like, you know, like a, a rhino. <laughs> <laughs> She was a big girl. Uh, shit. She was what, hammered. What are you doing between uh, films? What do you do for fun? Uh, well, I have six boys. Yeah, remember and, that? Uh, yeah, lots, yeah, of, yeah. lots of kids to take care of, and there's a lot in here about them. It's uh, Being a father of that many boys is very, very complicated because they're all in different stages of their mental development. You know, so one of them's, you know, in this phase, another one's in that phase, and they're all kind of, in a wonderful way, it's... What, um, what are the ages? I, my oldest son is 23, and then I have 21, 17, 16, 13, Two. and 5. You're, you're just, <laughs> well, you are really Very virile it. man. You are it's in it. Testosterone. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's, it's, I'm busy with them. Did you keep going because you wanted a daughter? No, I, 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 the daughter thing is very scary to me. I, 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 I mean, who knows? I mean, maybe someday, but uh, right now it doesn't seem likely. I, I, I wouldn't want to raise a girl anyway. It'd be too complicated. I'd, I'd prefer if I had a daughter, I'd want her to be gay. <laughs> yeah, that's what a lot of guys say. <laughs> like, the thought of some sleaze coming yeah, of some house. Girl, yeah. Hello, Mr. Matson. Hey, wait a second, Hello. man. Yeah. I know what you're doing. Yeah, I remember that. It's different when the boy <laughs> when, the, when the sons have the girlfriends come over and they have the towel on, you know. Hi, Mr. Madsen. You're like, oh, my God. <laughs> <laughs> you know, please go in the other room. Go outside. Please go away from me now. <laughs> you have to leave. Yeah. Yes, please get out. You know? <laughs> oh, shit. <laughs> you're out of town, and the housekeeper's like, you know, uh, there's a young lady over here, and the boys have her in the room. And I'm like, well... <laughs> Okay. <laughs> you know, mommy and daddy are n are not home. They take over. Trust me. Do you do you see any of them? Uh, maybe going in the direction you went in, as far as maybe a little trouble here and there. Or well, I, I, I think they could skip the trouble part because yeah. that didn't do me any good. But uh, <laughs> my oldest boy um, wants to be a, a tattooist, and mm. uh, he's actually pretty good at it. And uh, my son, my 21-year-old son, he wants to be an actor, hmm. which I've tried to talk him out of aggressively, but he's really kind of stuck on it. He auditioned for the actor's studio, and he's been studying a lot, and he's got an agent, a manager, and he's a very handsome kid. He looks like Clint Eastwood. I mean, he's really, you know, whatever it is, mm -hmm. it, you know, it or whatever it is. I mean, he has it, but um, it's very, very, very... It's a lot harder to get involved than I think he understands. It's really very, very. Isn't that something situation. he'll learn, though? I mean, it, it always seems like actors try to discourage their kids from going into acting. What is it that that is so bad about that? I think uh, you have to have a really thick hide, and and you know the rejection end of everything and the competitive part of it all. You know, if you're not really don't know what that end of it is it can really destroy you it can rip you up and, and oh, okay. i just don't want him to have to go through that if you look at anthony quinn or kirk douglas or anybody who had a few sons marlon brando for god's sakes uh mm -hmm. steve mcqueen i mean their sons really were up against a great big problem because every time they walk in a room people would look at them and go what happened you know what i mean it's kind of left them uh, a little bit without anything to do in life. Did Brando's kid try to act? Was oh, yeah. He, oh, I didn't Christian, know that. Yeah, yeah Christian oh, did, yeah. yeah. I was pretty good friends with him for like about two years before the shooting. Mm. And uh, we had 
We had an awful lot of fun together. Christian was pretty cool, but he didn't know what to do with himself, and, and I felt sad for that. Did you know Marlon? I met him twice. He, he, he was, I was with Christian once, and um, it was on New Year's Eve, and it was about 3 o'clock in the morning, and, uh, and the phone rang. And uh, Christian was like, this is the time pointing at the phone. You know, he didn't like to answer the phone. So I picked it up and I was like, oh, put Christian on the phone. And I'm like, what? <laughs> I want to speak to my son. And I was like, oh, my God. So I put my hand over the phone and I said, Christian, you know, it's your dad, man. And he's like, I don't, I don't want to talk to him. I'm not going to say nothing to him. Tell him I'm not here. And I was like, okay. So I went um yeah, uh, he's kind of, I'm not sure where he is. He's not, uh, he's not here. And he goes, put my son on the phone. And, got to... <laughs> and I was like, whoa, <laughs> shit, man. Now he's, he's yelling at me now. You know? and I'm like, great. I just talked to Mom, Brandon. He's yelling at me. <laughs> okay. If you're lying to him. Thanks, man. Yeah, I'm lying to the guy. <laughs> yeah, right. Tell him a lie. It's 3 o'clock in the morning. Everybody's loaded. And, you know, yeah. he's loaded. You know, and I'm like, this isn't good, right? And so I say, Christian, in the name of God, pick up the phone. And he's like, yeah. So he goes in the other room, and he picks up the extension, you know. And I'm trying to be polite. I'm not going to hang up. I want to make sure he gets it, right? So I'm listening, you know, and Christian picks up the phone. He's like, yeah. And Marlon goes, who was that asshole that picked up the phone? <laughs> I was like, great. You know, I was like, no, I mean, now he's called me an asshole. You know, it's like, oh, You sure no. lost points real quick. I mean, fucking <laughs> hell, you know. It wasn't a good beginning. <laughs> <laughs> what a great story. Uh, hey, who'd you come I, up with in the I business? I met him later in the evening, and I was yeah. like, hi, I'm the asshole. <laughs> Are you actually <laughs> did this with him? Was that you? I go, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Who'd you, who'd you come up with in the business? Who were your peers? Who'd you start out with out there? Um, well, I grew up watching Kirk Douglas and, and um, Burt Lancaster and Lee Marvin and Robert Mitchum. All the tough guys. Um, you know, those guys were pretty interesting. Mm -hmm. We don't have actors like that anymore. Humphrey Bogart and Spencer Tracy and... Oh, Jesus, you know, mm. that kind of talent just doesn't exist anymore. But I, um, I started off doing episodic television. You know, I was orderly in the hospital, and I worked as an auto mechanic. I worked as an orderly. I, I was did landscaping. I was a pipe fitter, a plumber's apprentice. I went to school to be a paramedic. I drove a lot of tow trucks. <laughs> <laughs> I, I worked in a in a factory that made airplane parts and. Uh, Oh my God! I drove a lot of trucks. I parked cars. <laughs> Good place to steal them from, too. By the way, <laughs> I, did, I did a lot of stuff. I tried to start a landscaping business and cut a lot of grass. And, uh, I painted houses and I shoveled the snow. I, mean, I did. Jesus, my Christ. God in heaven! I, I I did so many things. I um. I I worked in a lot of gas stations. Changed a lot of flat tires. Pumped a hell of a lot of gas. And I, 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 you know, I had this idea about the acting thing, but it didn't really seem like a reality. When I started doing episodic television, I didn't really see any, I didn't, I mean, peers, I don't know, I didn't have any of those because I was kind of a cowboy. Mm -hmm. I didn't realize when I got off the plane that a leather jacket and motorcycle boots was a costume. <laughs> <laughs> In Hollywood, yeah, yeah. you know what I mean? I know. And, and you know, I didn't. It could have been well for the dawn on me. <laughs> I went in for a reading really early on, and um, I was on my way to work, and so I had my Union Seventy Six stuff on. I had my blue shirt, Mike, you know, and my blue pants, and you know. Then I went in to read for the part of this punk kid or the mean older brother, and uh, when I, by the time I got to work. Uh, uh, Raymond was very angry because I was getting phone calls. And uh, they said, you know what? The casting director just wanted to tell you how brilliant he thought it was that you came in dressed as a blue-collar person. It was just incredible. It just, wow, you know, you have the part. You got the part. <laughs> and what did you do? You in a Western costume? And I was like, I was on the way to work. You know? <laughs> yeah, you this is what I do. I, went to, I rented this from a fucking Halloween store. <laughs> <laughs> I said, Jesus, you guys, but... I kind of, I kind of realized, and I caught on to the whole kind of, oh, okay, well, it's all make believe, and and uh, it was a good lesson. 
Oh, yeah, man. they couldn't accept the fact that you were really <laughs> going to a, a real job. I was making it up somehow. Years later, I, I was doing a Western in Augusta, Georgia, and uh, it was a part David Carradine was to have done. But having him pass away, it went to me. And when I got there, it was like 2 o'clock in the morning, and the producer explained to me that my wardrobe was in the room. And I went up there, and in the dark, and I opened it up, and there was this rack of clothes, and... I turned on the light and I looked at it and I started going through it and it was David's clothes. Mm. They had given me Carradine's wardrobe, you know, and I, and I yeah. see, it's bad enough that he died. I didn't need to see these tags, you know, with his name on it. And I called him up and I said, what in the name of God? I said, what? The? These are David's clothes. And they said, oh, well, you know, I said, it doesn't fit. Yeah. This stuff isn't going to fit me. I said, oh, my God. And they said, well, maybe you like a few. Anyway, the next day. They actually took me to a Halloween store <laughs> in Augusta to get my cowboy clothes. <laughs> oh, shit. Yeah, it was one of those productions. I got my wardrobe from a Halloween. Oh, God. <laughs> yeah, it was a great film. There was a big, there was a statue of James Brown right out in front of the store. And it's like on a, kind of on a pedestal. It's like, I guess James Brown was from Augusta. And he's got this statue of James Brown. It was so funny because I went and I looked at it and it was so small. It was like tiny. There it is. And I said, Look at that thing. There it is. Yeah. Yeah, and and then the, the guy I was with he goes, yeah, he didn't like it when he saw it. He he, he got mad. <laughs> that wasn't he got, bigger. He got mad, you know. But it's life size. But he got mad. He didn't like it. <laughs> so they put it up on a pedestal. See, they put it up on a higher to make it uh, look they, like they he's put it on taller. A star to make it bigger. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Jeez. Look at that. That's, That's pretty horrible. cool, right? That's kind of horrible, actually. <laughs> it's it's uh, it was very strange uh, getting my clothes in the Halloween store and the James Brown statue. And the James Brown statue. <laughs> See, the Halloween store is right right over there. <laughs> he's pointing right to behind where? that guy. Right. Halloween. Right behind that guy. I was guy. in there getting my wardrobe. <laughs> How authentic <laughs> could a cowboy? outfit possibly look <laughs> bought at a halloween store well i had to rummage around for a little while you know the prepackaged shit they had it just wasn't right the sheriff outfit with the little i went around in the back and i found a good hat which was the key to the whole thing yeah and then i went and I found, uh, <laughs> yeah looking like marty I, mcfly I, I and back some, to the future three some pants and i was able to put together i got a little vest i had my own shirt and I got some nice pistols on the set, you know, so I, it ended up okay. I, I, I got got it together. It took a while. <laughs> what was the name of the movie? Can we see a picture of uh, Michael from that? <laughs> <laughs> He's laughing. I don't know whatever happened to that thing. I don't know if it really <laughs> was thing. called Sundown at Noon or something. Did they ever release it? I don't think so. I mean, I don't oh. think it's finished yet. It might be in post-production. Oh, it's the 5,000 other projects on the IMDb that I'm supposedly in. Yeah, yeah. Lies. God. You uh, you handle a lot of firearms in, in movies. Are you comfortable with them? Do you like uh, shooting? Yeah. Yeah? Yeah. I, yeah. I mean, I have a hard time sometimes watching other actors with weapons because sometimes they just don't look right holding it, you know? Mm-hmm. And you think, well, I got this gun, you know, it's going to be pretty good, but it isn't that at all. It's, I can't explain it. So the way you handle it, mm -hmm. I think, is... is very unique. I mean, I think Clint Eastwood is good with a gun, but yeah. it's, it's not. It's an intuitive thing, and not everybody can do it. I, I haven't I rarely seen anybody who can handle a gun properly. Kirk Douglas could do it. Robert Culp could do it. Hmm. Steve McQueen was pretty good with the shotgun with twelve gauge in the getaway. I have that gun, by the way. His son gave it to me. Really? Yeah, it's a oh, Winchester. That's, that's very cool. Holy but the shit. gun thing is. Uh, it's, I can't explain it. It just. It, it, well, I'm thinking back also to a Reservoir Dogs. It, it almost looked like it was an extension of your hand. Yeah. You were, you were well, waving. You were gesturing with it at one point. Yeah. And it was like he's fucking talking with his gun. <laughs> it was like it was pretty good. Scratch your head. Yeah. It's 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 a yeah. it's a useful. Uh, uh, it's a nice gadget to to have in in, in, a, in a movie or in a scene. It's like a cigarette. I mean, you take a cigarette away from Humphrey Bogart and. Yeah, you know, yeah. I mean, bogey was bogey. Let's face it. But when he put that cigarette in his mouth and lit it up, all of a sudden, phew, it was a whole other thing. Yeah, yeah. And you give me Cold. a gun, it's <laughs> a whole different deal. It's, I don't know why. I, I, my shoulder holster. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I didn't want to wear that shoulder holster. It was too, it was no. too tight. 
You know what? The pants didn't match my jacket. And they, were, they were too tight. I had a T-shirt on. So when he tucked it in, it was way too tight in the waist. And I didn't want to wear that, that holster because it was very con confining. But uh, it was the outfit. And it was Quentin's idea. He told everybody to show up on the set with black suits on. And I didn't even have one. <laughs> so my pants and the jacket don't match. If you look at Buscemi, he's got black jeans on. He didn't have one either. <laughs> what the fuck? Where, the only thing where we got was from wardrobe? wardrobe from, we got the ties from wardrobe. The ties, the yeah. thin ties, yeah. And I was supposed to wear black shoes, and I didn't have any black dress shoes. I had black cowboy boots. And that's why I'm wearing them in the movie. That almost wow. makes sense, though, for the character. You seem like the kind of guy that would wear black cowboy boots. With that's the... all I had. And, and then I, when I got the razor, I figured, okay, where am I going to put this thing? Ah, the boot. I'm going to put it in my fucking pocket. Nah, well, yeah, baby. yeah, it just seemed to make sense to yeah, put it yeah. in the boot, but... A lot of things happened that were not in the screenplay. Thank God Quentin was decent enough to let me get away with a lot of stuff. <laughs> the, the dance, was that, was that something that, that he asked you to do, or you just kind of knew to talk into the ear and dance? Well, I'm no dancer, and uh, <laughs> I tried to explain that to him. But uh, in, in, the, in the thing, it said, uh, Mr. Blonde maniacally dances around the, the manacled cop. And I always remember that. And, you know... I was I was always questioning. Well, what do you mean, maniacally? <laughs> you know, you're supposed to be all handcuffed, and then it turned into duct tape, of course. But we never really rehearsed that. We rehearsed the whole movie for like a week, maybe a week and a half before we shoot. We're shooting, and they all, every time we got to that scene, I just said, "Listen, I don't want to rehearse it because I don't know what I'm going to do." Mm -hmm. And thank God Quentin didn't force me to do it because he obviously knew that I didn't know what I was going to do. And I kept saying, I'll do it on the day. <laughs> yeah, yeah. When we're actually going to do it, I'll figure out what to do. Because I'm good if I'm backed into a corner. And I said, listen, I don't, I don't know what I'm going to do. And I really didn't. And then when they finally shot it, we did like four versions of it. And the music was supposed to be uh, Barroom Blitz by the Blasters. Oh, really? Because he didn't have the rights to the Steelers wheel. And... Um, so I did it to Steelers because I knew that that was the one he wanted. So, and the <laughs> yeah, talking it's, thing—it's very subtle. Oh, I had yeah. the, the little I, dance is very it's subtle. It's very understated. It's <laughs> yeah, great. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's a subtle little move. <laughs> I, I, I suddenly had to do something, and then I had the damn th ear in my hand. And when I, I, you know, I was supposed to walk out of frame, but then actually he picked me up coming in the frame, and I was holding it and. You know, it's funny when you watch yourself because you see things that other people don't see. But I see myself thinking because I was thinking, what am I going to do? Oh, with really? What am I going to do with right? it? So you <laughs> and, and he was going, throw it, throw it, toss it. And I didn't really want to do that. Yeah. So I said, hey, can you hear me? I thought it was in here, right? <laughs> yeah, so he's yeah. his hey, can you hear me? And then, then I threw it after that. <laughs> but the dance is great because it really is. That's the way a sociopath who can't dance would dance. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> There's a little spin, a little yeah. backlog. They're yeah. not good moves. That's just it's what you're doing. Tough. You're massacring a man. Like a lunatic. <laughs> yeah, it was time to get the razor out, though, because I wanted to stop dancing. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> the perfect way to stop the dance. The song is yeah. just synonymous with this scene now, I think. Anytime you hear yeah. that, <laughs> like animal. Whoa. It's brutal. <laughs> no, I said, I told him, I said, Kirk, I'm going to jump on you like an animal. See? There was no other way to do it except mount him. It just, uh, I realized you had it. I mean, imagine it wouldn't be easy. To... So now you're, you're, you're hashing I'm, this out in your head? Yeah, and Quentin's going, throw it, throw it, throw it. See, I didn't want to. I just didn't really. <laughs> You just turn around like it's like three. <laughs> <laughs> and then you laugh at him. It's like, it's like three days later, he goes, uh, "You remember when you talked in the air?" <laughs> and I go, "Yeah." And he goes, "It's in the movie." <laughs> and I had never really thought that it wasn't going to be. So uh, it's kind of God damn. another lesson for me because yep. I That's wasn't funny. in control as much as I. And then when you. Then when he goes outside, we were talking about this earlier. It's fucking amazing. But what's great, too, is that when he holds the ear yeah. and he fucking throws it, then you look at your hand annoyed that there's blood on it, <laughs> yeah. and you almost wipe it on his shirt accusingly. Like yeah. You're an asshole. He's, he's, well, it's movie blood. It's very sticky. <laughs> and, and there's the car you could own. Well, you see, my, you see me trying to get my keys yeah. out of my pocket. My hand was all sticky from the blood. <laughs> and the fucking keys were, like, stuck in my pocket by the third time we did it.
Poor Kirk was, you know, later. Uh, he was get covered in, in it. Yeah. yeah he, he, uh, now, was your character supposed to have just had a can of gasoline for emergencies, or, or did you specifically get it to burn this guy up? No, I went to get it for that purpose. <laughs> okay, yeah, that I, would make sense. I, I tried to explain to uh, Quentin that um, if, in fact, I had set him up, if I blazed him up, can you imagine the harbor of him burning in flames at the same time I'm being shot by Mr. Orange? Now, that would have been pretty powerful. <laughs> yeah, no shit. You know, I mean, that torched him, and oh, my God. See, I think that would have been a lot more disturbing than the way that it actually is. But yeah. I think he was pretty fed up at my suggestions. <laughs> <laughs> at that point, he, was, he yeah. had had it with you? <laughs> yeah, he had, because every day I had something new. So I made all this up, man. This was just me. That's apple juice, by the way. Oh, wow. Yeah. More it's the same sticky. color as gasoline. Oh, hey. Jeez. It's handy to know. Kirk Learn something. Great. See, I'm going to throw the can out. I'm going to get rid of it. What's the matter? Don't do this. Please. Did that burn a little Don't. bit? <laughs> burn a little Don't bit. <laughs> <laughs> what a prick. Oh, God. On his fucking cut ear. You yeah. sure don't like oh, yeah. police officers in this. <laughs> well, you know, oddly enough, I've got a lot of cops who have been very nice Don't to me. Burn, yeah. Through the years after this, and I've always found it perplexing. <laughs> <laughs> perplexing, yeah. indeed. I was, in, I was in Dallas, Texas, and... Um, I went to see the chief of police, and he had a Mr. Blonde poster in his house. Oh, shit. Go yeah. through. Done. Done. See, I can imagine if I would have dropped it. Yeah. yeah, there you go. That is Tim's big moment, but you see his gun is empty. See? Yeah. And he goes like this again, even though there's no bullets left, which was kind of overdramatic, I thought. <laughs> yeah, it was a little and overdramatic. And then he drops the clip, and now he's going to go like this again, because he didn't know what else to do. See, <laughs> he's delirious from bleeding. So. <laughs> 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 I love Alright, Tim, you know, you've had your moment, you know. Just, <laughs> That's a, delirious. <laughs> lay down, okay. I actually wanted to have the Zippo in my hand still lit. When, oh, that when, would, when Chris gonna... Penn comes in and he sees me on the floor, I wanted to have the Zippo still <laughs> going. And I wanted Chris to lean over and whoosh, blow it out. But <laughs> Quentin I was like, he was so angry at me at that point. He was like, no, no, <laughs> no, no, we're not going to do it that way. I was like... <laughs> Okay, man. There must That's have been genius. some some it. great discussions oh, between the two. I love the breakdown of the scene. I but know. what's great too is the horrible awesome. strategy uh -huh. uh, to actually you're trying to hide out in that place to actually burn the cop alive. Like that <laughs> wouldn't draw attention to the hiding spot. <laughs> you're waiting for fucking Joe to get rid of the loot. <laughs> Where's Joe at? That? Well, I don't care. But in the meantime, I'm going to start a fire <laughs> yeah. and burn a cop yeah, alive. Just, just that won't cause any noise. Because I have five to. gallons of gasoline <laughs> in the yeah. middle of. A wooden warehouse. I'm, I'm angry. <laughs> so, not even trying to help the guy that shot. <laughs> You're too busy setting the guy on fire. You were a horrible guy to work with. That was great. That was hysterical. But I that, feel like the breakdown. What's amazing yeah. is like the stuff that made the scene so interesting. Like the stuff that was so fucking great about it was just kind of he just it, let him do what he wanted to do, which yeah, is great. Yeah. 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 No, he did the same thing in Kill Bill, pretty much. Oh, you really? He didn't want me to wear that hat. And uh, he didn't want me to have long hair. and didn't want me to wear that white cowboy hat. But I then you to, can't imagine it being another way. Any different you know? way. Well, I'd been in Mexico making a Western, and I got that Stetson in Durango, and I was wearing it to the... They have uh, Halloween shops in Mexico? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I was <laughs> <laughs> a real Stetson, and I kept wearing it to the read-throughs, and... Um, yeah, yeah there a good look. And Quentin says to me, "You're um, you're not going to wear that hat." In the movie. <laughs> <laughs> and I said, "Well, yes, I am." You know, and he goes, "No, you're not. You're going to cut your hair." And I go, "No, I don't think so." <laughs> <laughs> and so we had this little kind of silent war going on. And but I think by the third um, read through, I had become concerned about Uma because she would not make eye contact with me. And I Why went to Quentin that? and I said, listen, what's the deal with him? I said, you know, we got to do this thing together. And I got to have, you know, she's 
doesn't seem like she wants to communicate with me. I'm a little concerned. And he goes, no, 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 it's just the way she is. And uh, when we it comes down to it, she's going to be there and she'll be good. And I said, all right, you know, and I was leaving. And he goes, oh, yeah, yeah. And I go, what? And he goes, you know, um, now I can't picture you without the hair. <laughs> I can't picture you without the hair, so we're going to do it. And I said, oh, well, okay. But then after about a week of shooting... I did this stuff with uh, David at the trailer. And then we're out in Bakersfield. And I'm supposed to be doing the strip club. And he comes to my camper and he gives me sides. He wrote a scene and he gives it to me. And he goes, this is what we're going to shoot today. And I said, okay. And I read it. And it's the scene where the guy tells me to take off my fucking hat. Right? So he wrote a scene to make me get rid of the hat. <laughs> <laughs> what an asshole. Yeah, you know. <laughs> he set me him. up, man. He let me get comfortable. He knew I wanted it. He knew it was my kind of, <laughs> Just, it was, yeah, it was my strength, right? I had the hat, you know. And, had, and then he made me take it off. Because then I didn't have a choice. Because yeah, it was in the script. No, it's right? a movie. <laughs> like, oh, shit. Now I can't say no now, right? <laughs> He probably toiled. How could I get him to take that fucking hat off for a while before he realized, I'll just put it in the script. Yeah, that's what he did. That's a genius, okay? That really is. But the thing is, is when I took it off, I don't think he really fully anticipated the emotional uh, <laughs> empathy that I was going to get. Because you really kind of were like, oh, man. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's oh, like, buddy, didn't take off his hat. You know? <laughs> yeah. oh. he should have had a smaller hat underneath. Bud was bummed out. <laughs> uh, <laughs> little tiny one. Yeah. Like, those, like those Clinton things. Every time you take one off, there's another one underneath. Yeah, little... Until finally there's like this fucking thing. <laughs> tiny Is little this one derby. okay? What about this one? <laughs> oh, man. That's, who knew God. Kill Bill was all about the hat? Yeah. <laughs> it, it was. A, kind of, everyone was you know? obsessed with the hat. It was I a sympathetic it. scene for you. Yeah. I became the moral center yeah. of the film. <laughs> right. <Yeah. laughs> <laughs> <laughs> Write the scene just so you get rid of it. Yeah, it was, I mean, God, what a thing to do, right? Did yeah. she not make eye contact with you cause, because of the, the way you guys were kind of playing? Uh, like, uh, you know, she was kind of supposed to not like you. Yeah. I think, <laughs> well, I, I, I mean, everybody, all actors have their own way of getting to this psychological place they need to be. And I think maybe she was just trying to fill me out and just trying to figure out what I was going to do or... Let's face it, I mean, I had to do some pretty bad things with her mm -hmm. and some pretty mean things. And uh, I think she was just trying to find her way around me or trying to figure out what I was doing. Or maybe she was trying to throw me off. <laughs> I don't know. But the first thing we did was the thing in the graveyard. Mm. And um, when I first went to the set, her stunt double was in the back of the truck, all tied up with belts and stuff. And I went, oh, God, you know, I... I'm going to play this whole thing with a stunt double. <laughs> but then when after we did the blocking, and then I came to shoot, my God, there she was. And so, and she started looking at me then, and um, I realized it was just her way of preparing. Hmm. But she ended up being great, and I, I, I love our stuff together. I blew the whole front of the camera off with that shotgun, by the way. Really? Yeah, did you see that? <laughs> she watch when she comes in. The whole front of the camera? Yeah, I blew the whole lens off the camera. Bam. See wow. That? Well, <laughs> I had it right up against the lens, and um, but the shells were rock salt. And when I test, I did a test fire outside with it, and it was just like a big cloud of dust come out. And so they were thinking that it wasn't going to really hurt the camera. And they kept telling me to do it over here and over here and over there. And I and Quentin said, no, 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 I want you to point it right in the lens. And I said, yeah, I think so too. So he loaded me up and they, you know, it should have had some plexi in front of it or something, but it was so close. I think they were worried about a reflection, but when I fired that thing, it blew the whole front of it. <laughs> wow. Like a $50,000 Panavision. <laughs> <laughs> Just, well, yeah. When I come out that door, um, her sword was laying on the ground. And I kicked it, and it spun around in the air and stuck right in that barrel back there. It went around like a pinwheel and stuck right in the barrel. <laughs> really? Yeah. <laughs> that was pretty crazy. It's a good it trick. Really funny. What I, a I only have one bracelet on there, too, you see. And in the stills of the movie, I have two bracelets because I forgot to take mine off. <laughs>
I love these little these little details. They're great. All I, I want to do out. is watch movies with yeah, no kidding. Yeah, that's all I want to do. No, I like... picked out that shirt too. I still have that shirt. <laughs> <laughs> it is very you when you I'm see, looking now, at that shirt. And... This is a spit. Now you know who really was spitting in her face it was Quentin. Really? Yeah. See, she spit at me, but then they gave her a plunger. F and f see, <laughs> oh. Oh. See, the, some of the spits in my face were Quentin spitting at me. Oh. <laughs> some of her was him spitting at her because he wanted to be a specific, precise, certain way. See, she's completely a toy now. And there goes the needle right in the butt. Yeah. They had a lot of volunteers that night. And I think every girl on the crew did a, a take of their butt in the Uma Thurman jeans to get a needle in the butt. <laughs> wow. <laughs> and the shot in the movie just now of that, that was Quentin who stuck it in the ass. That wasn't me. <laughs> he gets all the good he gets all, all yeah, the man. good jobs. He, no, he, great he came over job. and he says, All right, all right, all right, you've, you've done enough. He goes, ah, <laughs> you know, I'm gonna do the needle in the butt and I was like oh. All right, <laughs> Mr. Did, Director. Does Quentin have a uh, a foot fetish? I've heard that. Yeah, because yeah. there's every every shot, every uh, movie yeah. has some kind of shot with a girl's feet, and yeah, yeah, he kind of does. But you see, he, in fact, I was supposed to wear two different colored cowboy boots. <laughs> I was going to have one red one, the uh, red uh, python boot, and then I was going to wear a black one on the other foot. It was my idea to have the two different cowboy boots on. And there's one scene in the picture when we're massacring everybody at the wedding. I do have the two different boots on. But then later on, he was like, no, no, it's too much. I don't want the two boot thing. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, all right, okay, whatever. You know, so I didn't get away with that one. But man, that's kind of a foot thing. It sounds like you guys yeah. got along. You and didn't apply to men. <laughs> Yeah, we, we no, do. No, didn't we, apply to men. I yeah. just did the friar's roast of him in New York City. Right, right on. They actually That's made it. me a friar. I am officially a friar. Oh, really? In New York City, yeah. God bless those guys. And quite an honor to be a friar. That's pretty cool. There was a lot of, lot of old Lewis, school guys in there. Oh, yeah. Freddie, Freddie Roman, and Frank Sinatra, and Dean Martin. They don't show They're up so much the anymore. <laughs> there are pictures. There are pictures on They're the pictures wall. pictures on the wall. Good enough. <laughs> you see that? I got two bracelets on now. Yeah. See? Ah, yeah. A little flub see? there. Yeah, I was in my. Flub. Yeah, yeah. It's just <laughs> trivia. A little flub. She was good, too. Daryl Hannah was enjoyable in this. I'm going to go home now and watch this yeah. fucking movie. Yeah, I think so. It, it gets me psyched. That's a, such a, it's such a good movie. She lives in Malibu. I see her all the time. Yeah? Yeah. She's nice. Sometimes people think Deanna is Daryl Hannah. That's wasn't it. that her own car in that too? That uh, that I no, that's mine. That Trans Am. Uh, yeah, wasn't no, that hers? I, no, I, no, I took that. I actually acquired that while we were shooting. So, what don't you take from the set? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Takes whatever he wants. <laughs> yeah. You Who's can, can work, tell him no, though. You can work things out. You know, if, yeah. you, if you approach the subject in the Make right some way. Deal, What's the yeah. coolest piece yeah. like mo uh, movie memorabilia you have? I have that sword that's in my hand. Yeah. And, oh damn, uh, that's oh nice. Oh my god, I got the Stetson. The Steve McQueen, gone? I, I guess the Steve that's McQueen pretty, that's shotgun pretty cool. is probably the best thing I got. And I had it ID'd by the weapons handler that made that the original Peck and Paw film. Mm. I was making a picture called Species, and uh, Bobby, um, Bobby Visiglio was the weapons handler. And um, he had been the weapons handler on the original Getaway. And I told him I had the shotgun. And he goes, you don't have it. I said, yes, I do. I said, Steve's kid gave it to me. And he goes, Yo, you don't have it. And I said, I'm going to bring it over here and show it to you. And he goes, all right, I got my books, and I'm going to look it up. I have the numbers and everything. And I said, okay. I wrapped it up in a red bath towel, and I put it in my trunk. And when I got to this set, I said, Bobby, I have it. And he comes walking over, and I open the trunk. And he said, okay, man. And I started unrolling it. And... The minute he saw it, he had his books with him. And the minute he saw it, he just went, oh, okay. And he said, walk away. I said, what are you doing? He goes, that's it. That's, it. <laughs> <laughs> that's how good he was. He wow. just knew it by sight. So I, that's all the identification I needed. That's pretty. Yeah, that's a great it's piece neat. of It's a nice yeah. ratchet 12-gauge pump. What was, your, what was your favorite movie? You've made a lot of movies, Michael. I, you know, I, I played an Irish-American prize fighter in a picture called Strength and Honor. That never got out there and never got any distribution. I think it got caught somewhere between the wrestler and the fighter. And, um, you know.
know, it still has a chance to be something good if it could get dis- distribution, could get properly released. Um, mm-hmm. I think it's a really damn good film. It's a very emotional thing. There's no guns or cigarettes or anything. It's about <laughs> a father and a son, and a, I accidentally kill another fighter in the ring in a prize fight, and I promise my family I'm never going to fight again, and then my little boy is sick, and he can get an operation in Los Angeles. The whole thing takes place in Ireland, and uh, so I agree to do this big bare-knuckle fight in this gypsy camp with Vinnie Jones and uh, the prize money to save my kid, and it's, you know, it's funny because you do a, a film like that and you see it and you know how good it is and you know what it could do. It could completely change the course of your life and your career. And then you find out about the underbelly of the industry and what really goes on with distributions and knee slapping and all kinds of deals that are made with people that want a certain thing in a certain place. And you're really, really hard to get in there, especially with an independent film. And um, it's still possible because I know the director and some of the guys are still trying really hard to get it in the theaters and get it released. But uh, it's um, that's a good one. I mean, if I had to pick one out, I guess that would be it. Mm. Is there any way we could see it? I, I know. You can't it's, like just buy it online or something. Ne- ne- Netflix. Yeah. Something. Strange, Netflix. That, that's the poster of it. See. Yeah. It's right there. Let me look how many awards this thing got. It got like 38 nominations. I got Best Actor in Boston Film Festival. It got Best Picture, Best Director, Best Actor in New York Independent Film Festival. Did you get it into Tribeca? No, it never went to Tribeca, but it did everything else. Los Angeles, New York, Boston. I remember when you were in here a couple of years ago, you were talking about this. You've been really pushing this for a couple of years now. Well, you know, I, I'm really indebted to the Mark Mahan, the director, and the yeah. guys in Ireland to put up the money for it. And it's such a beautiful story, and it's a different side of me, or, or maybe not. It's just, hmm. at least it was not the kind of movie. I mean, I think a lot of people saw it, and they were like, oh, my God. I, I think I think it kind of concerned some people who would be very happy to keep me in the box as the bad guy. Oh really? And uh yeah. And uh but you know, it's there. It's it's there. I mean, who knows what will happen someday. I'm do like, you just walk into some places and see some people and go like, "Oh, this guy." Like <laughs> you you just know what the guy's all about. That's yeah. Hollywood insider yeah. bullshit. Yeah. Happens all the time. Yeah. Do you are you are you good at playing the game though? Like it seems like you're a pretty straightforward kind of <laughs> a Go fuck yourself, kind of guy. But <laughs> yeah, you know, to a, certain, to a certain degree, I am that way. But I've also realized that being that way sometimes can be very misconstrued. Mm. You know, you can be in a room with fifty people and sign fifty autographs and have fifty conversation, but that fifty-first person who might want to talk to you when you're leaving, or when the building's on fire, <laughs> or maybe you know you have something really important to do, and you don't have that much time for that one person. That one person for the rest of their entire life on earth will say i met michael madsen that fucking asshole you know he's a prick he's drunk he's a jerk you know he right. fucking blew me off you know it's really kind of a, a mixed bag of tricks you you really you speak your mind and you talk about a lot of things that a lot of people know are true but you can't really say it because mm-hmm. if you do you're going to be put out of the business for saying it so yeah. it's kind of a it's a very, very strange... I mean, let's look at this whole thing with Charlie Sheen is going on. Oof. But, you know, I'll tell you a story about Charlie. When my friend Christopher Penn died, uh, Sean called me up to be a pallbearer at Chris's funeral. And I was carrying that box into the chapel. Uh, and uh, I was really shattered. I mean, it was one of those times in my life where I just couldn't put it together. And I was really crying, like, heavily and I had been for a couple of days, and, and I was really destroyed. And I was walking up the thing with them, and, and uh, I just, I, it started to happen again in the, in the church, and I was crying so hard. And I felt somebody come over and put their hand on my shoulder, who started to walk behind me, and I was carrying the, the box. And, and I looked behind me, and it was Charlie. You know, 
I had made a picture with Charlie in Arizona. We made a motorcycle picture together called Beyond the Law. And we went crazy when we were making the film, and obviously, and all these other things that are going on with him. But you know what? On that day, when I was walking in that church, carrying my dead friend, and I was so sad, Charlie came over, put his hand on my shoulder, you know? Nobody else did that that mm. day. So for whatever that means, you know. Yeah, now he's... Uh... He has empathy. He's, you know. Yeah. I mean, it's, it was... I think, you know, it's so insane how people get... There's like a parade when people go down. Look at what they were doing to Michael Douglas when he was sick. I was in a market, and I saw a newspaper. It had this picture of Michael Douglas looking down and like this, and he looked terrible, like he was already dead. And it said the final days, the final seconds, it's over. You know, Kirk flies in. Catherine Zeta-Jones collapses in the airport. It's done, you know, and this is where he's going to be buried. And right next to it, there was a People magazine or an Us magazine with this really nice picture of Michael. And it says, I haven't given up. I feel stronger every day. And you look at these two in front of you and you go, who's telling the truth? Mm -hmm. You know, and then when he got better, I was watching television and there was one of these tabloid uh, guys on TV and he was saying, Michael Douglas has recovered. And uh, he claims that the press was glorifying in his death and the tabloids were relishing the fact that he was going down. Of course, this isn't true, but these are Michael's allegations. Now, wait a second. <laughs> I saw <laughs> it. It was true. It was yeah. down, you know, they were happy to die. Why do they do that? We were talking about how they love just ripping people down. Like the, the Charlie Sheen thing is a, a prime example of uh, people love saying they want their privacy and leave me alone. And when the press comes up to them or the government wants to put a camera up somewhere, it's like, hey, hey, privacy. But they're the first ones to want to know every detail of what Charlie Sheen is taking, who he's going out with, what, what he's saying. Yeah, well, they want to vicariously live through the situation, I suppose. I just, I think, and I he's mean, been it's saying me, that, though. He's been saying, look, I'm living like a rock star. You people never will. So you can't even wrap your mind around what I'm doing, is what he was saying. Well, there's a certain amount of sanity to that statement, but uh, <laughs> it's not going to spin that way. I, I no, think they're no. going to spin it back against him. Mm hmm you know, the flip side of the coin is you're lucky to have a job and make that kind of money. Yeah, well, that's what everybody looks and, at. Uh, you know, a and, certain and amount I think of he's throwing it away. Well, time will tell. I, I have no dire predictions for Mr. Sheen. I'm sure that he'll come out um, on the high side. CBS is in a weird position, though. Normally, the networks are just worms. But they're, they're kind of in a weird position because if something bad happens, people are like, well, you saw this coming, and, you, you know, it's like, and they're like, eh. Well, look at Elliot Spitzer. He's got his own talk show. Oh, for God's yeah. sakes. I mean, come on. Hey, I mean, hey. everybody. You would have bet a lot of money against that. People are trying to get down. me to do a reality show to meet the Madsons. You should. But when I look, well, my house is pretty funny and pretty crazy. It would probably be a big hit. But when you look at what happened to the Hogans and uh, the rest of them and yeah. reality shows, you blast your whole family apart. Could get in the way. Yeah, yeah I mean, come on. I, I don't need that kind of trouble. No, I don't think so. So you have to be on five seasons before they finally start paying. Oh, is that the uh, the number? Yeah, five well, seasons. In the beginning, they, it's pretty grim. They don't give you yeah. anything. It's yeah. all speculation. Yeah, we don't know. <laughs> well, we don't know how this is going to work out. So we're not going to pay you a cent, basically. <laughs> we're gonna if come it's in. successful, well, then we'll renegotiate. But right now, we're just going to play a game. And I'm like, no, man. No, thanks. <laughs> no, no. Sorry. Got a built-in audience. What yeah. the hell you want to do that for? Turn my kids into celebrities overnight. For well, yeah, nothing. yeah. It's kind of that, scary. Yeah, it's got to fuck them up a little oh, bit. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. No doubt. <laughs> you think? Yeah. 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 Plus, you had to work for so many years. That's not fair for them just to become famous without doing anything. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Forget about the kids thing. What about you, damn it? Five years, work. pal. I've been doing this. Okay. <laughs> Can't get my boxing picture relief. Well, fuck, this was great, Michael. Michael Madsen always fucking a hit on our show. Absolutely. You guys are very gracious. Always fun, thing. man. What are you Love kidding me? We can on. listen to this all day. Love having you on, man. I want to just watch a whole movie with him one day. Yeah, we'll go see the movie. For bleeding. one show. Which yeah. is live we'll commentary. Yeah, bleeding. live commentary. The Bad Priest. All right, yeah, so you it's... You gotta promise me you're gonna read one of these every day. Oh, yeah, the book is called... Uh, yeah, let's let me give it a plug for the book. It's called uh, American Badass Michael Madsen. It's got a picture of him on a motorcycle on the cover and, and also getting out of a car and smoking a cigarette. It's like all phases of his uh, 
of his it's, kind of his, like his life, you know. It's a lot of personal. pictures, yeah. which is a selling point for a lot of people. Yeah, and it's great. It's got these a uh, lot of pictures, really and, cool uh, stories, and some them. stories in there. So stories. And the movie he's promoting now is called The Bleeding, and uh, the the exclusive engagement here in New York is at the Village Cinema East. It's uh, I mean tonight through yes. uh, March third, and the big premiere uh, is tomorrow night, which uh, this show is invited to. And will be going to. <laughs> we we, we check, never get invited. We got to check anything. our schedules, right? No Jimmy? one. Is, but we, it was so embarrassing. <laughs> how we one of us should have said, "Well, I don't know." I Can we at least fucking yeah, pretend? Be right. Oh, we got before the question. Uh, but no, actually, we asked him because I don't Can know. We if go. You, and he's like, "All right, <laughs> I guess." <laughs> he didn't even know what, what he was inviting us to. He's like, "I don't know if you want." <laughs> yes. Yes. <laughs> but anything. We're so needy, Michael. Yeah. Danny had a great idea, though. That's fun. Yeah. Michael. Danny had a great idea. Just. Go over people's houses and do live commentary for the movies. <laughs> like yeah. instead of having a, a commentary track on the DVD, it's just like, no, here's Michael Madsen. He's coming over the house and you sit down. You, That's a great idea. You gave me, yeah, you gave me a really good one. That's I wish actually, you were running a studio. I'm, I'm unemployed. That's great. Oh, damn it. I'll yeah. talk. We'll, we can talk after the show. Not for yeah, long, sure. I'm sure. Yeah. Uh, I guess that's it. Michael Madsen, everyone. Yeah. Thank you guys. Thanks, man. Thank we'll, you. We'll see you next time. I have one thing. Oh, oh yes, Jimmy. Uh, yeah. This Saturday, I will be at the uh, Fuck Wellmont Theater in Montclair, New Jersey. Fuck one show Wellmont. only. <laughs> yeah, the Fuck Wellmont. It was bought out by. It was the Wellmont, but the Fuck Bank bought it. <laughs> <laughs> see you tomorrow. <laughs> Facebook.com slash opiate The virus. Sirius XM.